Welcome to First Parish Church in Billerica, a Unitarian Universalist welcoming congregation. Whoever you are and wherever you are in life's journey, you're welcome here this morning. And we invite you to stay after the service for coffee and conversation. My name is Brita. I'll be the worship assistant for today's service. And our worship leader this morning is Reverend Nanine Gowdy. She was our minister for a number of years. She is just wonderful. She is such a font of wisdom and she knows so much about so many things. And we are very, very happy to have her with us here this morning. Um, I do wanna just, oh, oh, excuse me, before we get to the annou announcements, uh, acknowledge that First Paris Church was built on the unceded land of the Pawtucket and Massachusetts peoples. We acknowledge the connection that they have continued to maintain with the land here in this place that we call Billerica. And we recognize the hardships they have endured and commit ourselves to caring for the land and fostering good relationships with our indigenous neighbors. Are there any announcements? I know our president has a bunch of them. <laughs> Hi, good morning everyone. And, and welcome, I'm Barbara Maloney and my main announcement is that there is a meeting after the service today, downstairs a congregational meeting. So I hope everybody will stick around to participate in the meeting. Um, what else did I have? Yankee Doodle Homecoming is September 17th. That is this coming Saturday. We have uh, tents and tables. We have people lined up to march in the parade. We will need help with the tables. Um, and we plan to meet at the church at 8.30. If you are able to help with anything or want to participate in Yankee Doodle Day, please let me know or, or um, Jeannie, who's uh, joining us on Zoom today, or Brita, who's right up there. Um, and the next Board of Trustees meeting isn't until the 13th. Um, we need greeters. We always need greeters for our welcoming our new members. Um, on the 24th of this month, we've tentatively scheduled if anybody can meet us here in the morning. We do, want to do a lot of cleanup around the church, especially up there there's lots of boxes of old decorations and things that need to be weeded out and decided what's kept and what's not um just general cleanup with our new reverend coming up it'd be nice to freshen up the place and get a lot of the old stuff and get it out of here <laughs> that's everything i could think of Well, oh, I thought of two more things. <laughs> I will announce them at the congregational meeting as well, but we do have a new minister, Reverend Steve Wilson, who will be, st who will be joining us next week. He won't be doing the service. It will be uh, Woody Woodrick, Reverend Woody Woodrick, is, but he's gonna be joining us. He's going to be helping out with the youth group and a lot of pastoral care. And most of you have already read about him in the newsletter, but I just, he will be with us every second and fourth Sunday of the month. And we have a new DRE, um, Emily, I knew I was gonna forget her last name. You all are gonna know her as Emily O'Donnell. And I can't think of her married name, just went, flew out of my head, but she will be joining us next week. I think that's it this time. Okay, um, just to reiterate, Reverend Steve Wilson, uh, is going to be a, a new um, minister working with us, which is wonderful. Uh, he'll be on the first and third Sundays. Uh, if you want to meet him, he's going to be at the helping with, well, he's going to march in the parade with us. And, and then he, uh, we'll introduce him uh, on Saturday. He'll be in the Yankee Doodle uh, parade. He's going to march. And then he'll be at the service on Sunday and the folks can see him and learn a little about him. So uh, excellent. Okay. Before I begin, I would like to let you know that this font of wisdom made a big mistake in your order of service. 
the quote at the top is not from the Constitutional Convention. It was from the convention where they wrote the Declaration of Independence. 1776 should have given you a clue. You and I and all of us blew about with the winds of summer, following the sun in different ways of freedom and play, finding rest in the cool stillness of shadows and moving to the slow, heart-struck rhythms which turn the long hours of summer light. Now is the time of our gathering in. As we gather in, we would like to light the chalice. Please join me for the words that are in your order of service. Life is a gift for which we are grateful. We gather together in community to celebrate the glories and the mysteries of this great gift. We come together at this time and in this place on the bridge of autumn. Summer is fading backward into memory and winter awaits in snowy brilliance. We meet with eagerness and delight, needing one another for sharing. We have joys and sorrows and hopes to share, questions, things we care about and want to help make better, things that we would like to understand, ideas waiting to be heard. Today we are gathered in gladness, once more the special community that we call our church a community of all ages that sings its songs, tells its thoughts, asks its questions, and searches together with courage and with love. Let's join together in singing the opening hymn, number 361, Enter, Rejoice, and Come In. in the affirmation of faith which is in your order of service. Love is the doctrine, the doctrine of, this of this church. The quest of, quest of truth, truth is its sacrament, sacrament 
and service is its prayer. To dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge and freedom, to serve humanity and fellowship, and that all souls shall grow into harmony with the divine. Thus do we covenant with each other and with God. Spirit of East, spirit of air, of morning and springtime, be with us as the sun rises in beginnings of time of planting. Inspire us with fresh breath of courage as we go forth into new adventures. Spirit of the South, spirit of fire, of noontime and summer, be with us through the heat of the day and help us to be ever growing. Warm us with strength and energy for the work that awaits us. Spirit of the West, spirit of water, of evening and autumn. Be with us as the sun sets and help us to enjoy a rich harvest. Flow through us with a cooling, healing quietness and bring us peace. Spirit of the North, spirit of earth, of nighttime and winter. Be with us in the darkness, in the time of gestation. We have gathered here from the four directions to start another church year. Some of us have traveled far. Some of us spent the summer in staycation. Some of us have had joyful experiences and some of us have not. No matter what our experiences since we last gathered in June, it is important that we share and reconnect. The first Sunday in September that we start the church year, we have a water ceremony to mark the end of our summer and the beginning of a new year. This is the time during the service when we usually have our joys and concerns, but on this date, we extend the sharing so that we can hear from everyone. When you are ready to share with us where you have been and what you did in the last two months, I invite you to come forward and pour your water into the bowl, then tell us your experience. If you don't have water with you, there is a pitcher from which you can add to the communal bowl. Juwa will close our water communion with some Water music by Handel.
During the hot summer of 1776, a group of white men ranging in age from 27 to 69 met in Philadelphia to write the Declaration of Independence from England. 56 of them signed the document. Two of the signers were John Adams, who became the second president of the United States, and Thomas Jefferson, who became the third president of the United States. While they were deliberating, Abigail Adams, wife of John, wrote to her husband. A portion of her letter is in the order of service. She was pleading with her husband to make sure the delegates remembered to include women in this Declaration of Freedom. They didn't. In fact, the Declaration explicitly says that all men are created equal. Eleven years later, after the Revolutionary War freed the colonies from Great Britain, there was another chance for the writers to include women in the U.S. Constitution. Again, they failed to do so. Blacks were mentioned, but not to give them rights, but to give the enslavers more representation in Congress. Women were major supporters of abolishing slavery. Indeed, the abolition movement gave women a public voice for the first time. After the Civil War in 1870, the 15th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution gave blacks the right to vote. The only hitch is that it meant only black men. Women were still denied the right. However, women were active in the movement for abolition. And they had had a taste of power and decided to use that experience to go after the vote for women. It took another 50 years and a lot of agitating, but finally, in 1920, women had the right to vote. 140 four years after the Declaration of Independence. By the 1970s, women realized that we were still not recognized as having full rights in the Constitution, only the right to vote. It was decided that we needed the Equal Rights Amendment added to the Constitution. Congress passed a bill to advance what would have been the 27th Amendment to the Constitution. 
it was sent to the states to ratify it. Three-fourths of the states, or 38 of the 50, had to pass it to make it law. I was active in that movement to expand our rights. One Sunday, I took an ERA, a petition to church, to collect signatures during coffee hour. At that time, I was the superintendent of Sunday school at our UU church. The petition simply asked Massachusetts voters to put it on the ballot. When the minister realized what I was doing, he tried to grab the petition to tear it up. I was suddenly surrounded by women who blocked his path in every direction. Sisterhood. There were 35 states which ratified the amendment, three states short. To date, 264 years after writing the Declaration of Independence, women are still not recognized as having full equal rights in the US Constitution. I believe that this has contributed directly to the Supreme Court's decision to deny women the right to have control over their own bodies. I am glad this issue has finally energized women into taking action to increase their voter registration, to publicly demonstrate for their rights. But we will keep fighting for our rights over and over again until women are included in the Constitution. Part of the answer, I believe, is public awareness. This church year, I am going to try to increase awareness by dedicating one Sunday each month to the contributions women have made to this country. Abigail Adams was a Unitarian. She is buried in our church in Quincy. 246 years later, she has still not received the equal rights she asked for. Let us show our support for our foremother and work toward fulfilling her greatest wish. Let's join together in extinguishing the chalice. After the hymn.
remind us and call us back to ourselves. Their courage and love evoke our own. We, the living, carry them with us. They are our voices, their hands, their hearts. We take them with us and with them choose the deeper path of living. Please say the name of someone who has passed that is still with you. Elise Gowdy Wright. A person you knew that's still with you, example for you in your heart. May, the, may these memories be forever blessings. Amen. <laughs> 